Good morning. Happy Monday. This is JC. Thank you, Yvonne. Happy Monday. You have a great day, sweetie. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is JC. I'm your hostess. Top of the morning. Go ahead. Top of the morning, JC. Good morning. Declare Victory. This is Sister Sabrina. I have a prayer request uh, for my mother, Miss Penny. She's in the hospital with pneumonia. Please pray for her. Okay, what was your mother's name, Sabrina? Sister Penny. Okay, Sister Penny. She's in the hospital. We definitely will lift her up in prayer for pneumonia. Thank you. Thank you. Have a happy Monday. You too. Thank you. Good morning, Deborah Evans and Monica. (laughs) Good morning, JC. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you too. You have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is JC. Good morning, JC. It's Pretty Patrice. Happy Monday. Hey, Pretty Patrice. Happy Monday. Uh, Happy Monday to you as well. Happy Monday, Declare Victory. Sabrina, I'll be praying for your mom. Thank you, sis. You all have a wonderful day. You too. You as well. All of you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is JC. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, Sister JC. This is Sister Yvonne. To all have a blessed week. You as well, Sister Yvonne, and thank you. Anyone else? Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday. Happy April 1st, a new month. Hello, this is, hey, you guys, good morning, good morning, it's Moxie. Good, good morning, morning, everybody, happy, magnificent Monday, good to hear you guys. And you as well, you enjoy your day, Moxie, magnificent, Moxie. You Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Good morning, welcome to Declare Victory, this is JC, anyone else who would like to say hello? Hey, JC. Hey, um, Declare Victory. It's a magnificent Monday. Like Ma Moxie said, let's do it. Thank God for yesterday, today, and forevermore. Have a blessed week, everybody. Thank you, Sister Rochelle. You do the same. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is JC. Good morning. This is wonderful Wanda. Good morning, wonderful Wanda. You enjoy your day. Thank you, you as well. Thank you. I will do that. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is JC. I am your hostess for today. Happy Monday. And welcome to a new month, April 1st, 2024. Good morning. This is Yvonne again. Oh, we um, came into a new month. We're going to have new victory, new clarity, new knowledge, new wisdom. Hallelujah. I just thank God for who God is. Hallelujah. To all be blessed. Amen. Amen. You as well, and thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is JC. I am your hostess for today. Happy Monday. Magnificent Monday. I thought. Good morning, good people of God. This is Tashina. Good morning, Tashina. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you. Thank you, thank you. 
Anyone else before we get started with the call? Good morning. Good morning. This is Kevin. Good morning, Kevin. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Good morning, it's Brother Michael. Happy Monday. Good morning, Brother Michael. Happy Monday. Okay, what's well, time to get started with the call? Before we move forward, we ask you to mute your line so that we can proceed. Hello again, my name is JC and I am your hostess. Thank you for joining us here on Declare Victory. We are a prayer call that meets Monday through Friday, starting at 6 a.m. Can you please um, mute your line? Thank you. We are a prayer call that meets Monday through Friday, starting at 6 a.m. Can I get someone to please mute their line right now? I would appreciate it. Thank you so much. We are a prayer call that meets Monday through Friday, starting at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to edify, empower, encourage, and equip you in your walk with Christ. Be sure to call in during the month of April. Our theme for the month is entitled The Power of Agreement. Each declare will focus, excuse me, each declares focus will be on the agreement with the truth of God's word and its benefit to advancing the kingdom of God. Make sure you invite a friend so they can be blessed too. There is one announcement today. First, please join us tonight and every Monday night for Marriage Matters for Married Couples or Married Hopefuls. You can call in to this same phone number tonight at 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, 9.30 to 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You will be happy that you did. We have one spoken prayer request today from Sabrina. Please pray for her mother, Sister Penny, who's in the hospital with pneumonia. The order of the call, prayer and corporate praise will be brought by Yolandra. The declaration will be brought by Christina Joy. Then we will go right into the closing comments hosted by the declare. Once again, prayer and corporate praise will be brought by Yolandra. The declaration will be brought by Christina Joy. Then we will go right into the closing comments hosted by the declare. The scripture for today, Matthew 18 and 19. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. At this time, we ask you to put your phones on mute until instructed to come off mute. I now pass the call to the prayer warrior, Yolandra. Have a beautiful day, and I love you all. Hallelujah, 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 glory, 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 God. I bless your magnificent and holy name this morning. Lord God, I am so glad that we recognize, I recognize, we recognize, Lord God, as you are Lord and Savior of our lives, Lord God. God, we thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, for the resurrection of your son, God. Oh, God, we we hurt, Lord God, and we, we are saddened, Lord God, and we are ashamed of the way that we uh, crucified your son, Lord Jesus, on the cross and the dreadful, dreadful, painful death, Lord God that he had to bear for our sakes, Lord God, for our sin, Lord God, for our uh, iniquity, Lord God, for our blindness, Lord God, hallelujah, for our forsaking of him and who he was. God, we are uh, uh, grateful, God that you, Lord God, are all-powerful, that you, God, are all-knowing. But most of all, of all, Lord God, you are most gracious, most kind, 
And, Lord God, you are forgiving, Lord God. Your word transcends, transcends, Lord, from the beginning of time, Lord God, into eternity, Lord God. Your word, your way, and your will will be done in our lives and on this earth, God. We're grateful, Jesus. Hallelujah that he rose again on the third day, Lord God. We're grateful, God, that he stayed among us, Lord God, for 40 days, Lord God. We are grateful, Jesus, hallelujah, that he left his Holy Spirit, Lord God, with us, within each and every one of us, God. All we have to do is believe and to receive God. We have to be in agreement, Lord God, with your way in your life. God, forgive us, Lord Jesus, when we sin. Hallelujah. Forgive us, Lord God, if we sin. Hallelujah. Forgive us, Lord God, when we fall short of your glory and your grace and your majesty. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we want to be in agreement with your word. We want to align ourselves, Lord God, with your way. We want to be uh, the disciples of Christ, Lord God. We want to be uh, the human beings, the loving beings, Lord God, that you would have us to be, Lord God. So we need to get into agreement with your word, Lord God. We need to align ourselves, Lord God, with your way, Lord Jesus, and we will fall short, God. Oh, God, but when we fall short, God, help us, Lord God, to uh, uh, erect ourselves. Help us, Lord God, to course correct ourselves, Lord God. Help us, Lord Jesus, to get back up, Lord God, and try, try again, Lord God, because with you, your word says all things are possible. Your word says that if you, if we abide in you, Lord God, you will abide in us, Lord God. Your word says, Lord Jesus, that you will be a light unto our feet, Lord God. Your word says, Lord God, that when we lean to you, Lord God, you will give us understanding. Your word says, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, that you have power. We, you have power. We believe that you rose. We believe that you died and you rose, Lord God. And we believe everything that you say, God. We agree, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, God, we also ask you, Lord God, that we have our loved ones, Lord God, that are in need of your glory, that are in need of your praise, that are in need, Lord God, of your touch. God, we pray for Sister Sabrina's mother, Lord God, for pneumonia, Lord God. God, we pray that you would eradicate it, Lord God, that you would suck it out, Lord God, that you would target it right now and let it die right now like the blood, Lord Jesus, that cleans us, Lord God, that cleanses us, Lord God, that removes anything from us, Lord God, so that you see us and we are faultless and we are blameless, Lord God. So, God, we pray that our prayers, Lord God, are in alignment, are in agreement with your will, Lord God. I pray for Sister Patty, Lord God, that you will heal her right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, you are great, great, great. Hallelujah. God, we pray for any unspoken prayer request, Lord God, because you know our thoughts, God, before we even think our thoughts, God. We're grateful, God, that you know us, you know us, you know us, hallelujah. God, you know our comings and our goings. You know what's down the street and around the corner. Lord God, you know what we're up against and what we will face. And hallelujah, God, you know the end. You know our journeys, Lord God, and we're grateful, God, that when we lie sick in our sick beds, Lord, you are there, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that you will never leave us or forsake us, Lord God. It's we who turn our back on you, Lord God. Help us to stand strong and flat-footed, Lord God, determined and defiant, uh, uh, knowing that you are are our God, that nothing and no one this side of heaven, Lord God, can deter us, can move us, can speak ill of you, can do anything, Lord God, that would change our mind and our agreement with your will for our lives. God, I bless your name. Hallelujah. God, I pray.
pray for Christina Joy, Lord God, that you will give her a mighty, mighty declaration, Lord God, that it will pierce our hearts the way uh, they pierced his hands, Lord God, hallelujah, that it will convict us, Lord God, and give us just enough for this day, Lord God. God, we recognize you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. God, we love you, God, hallelujah. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, when we sin. Forgive us, God, when we sin against you, Lord God. Your way says when we are tempted, Lord God, that you will give us a way of escape, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So, God, we pray, God, we pray for the conditions of this world, Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray for tomorrow because we cannot see it, Lord God, but we have full focus and full faith, Lord God, that you are in the midst, Lord God. There are more than two or three of us, God, and we stand in agreement like God. We ask and we invite and we need the Holy Spirit, Lord God, right now in this place to fall fresh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. So as we take our phones, Lord Jesus, off of you, we give you praise, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Rose, God. Hallelujah. You, Rose, God. Hallelujah. You, Rose, and you reign, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are great, 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 great God. Hallelujah. Forgive me, God. Great and risen King, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Lord, we need you. Lord, we recognize you. So as we put our phones on mute, Lord God, we don't put our hearts on mute, Lord God. God, we will always shout out to you, God. We will always need you. We will always acknowledge you. We will always be grateful to you, God, because you are the great God. Hallelujah. You reign, you reign, you reign. You rose to reign, Lord God. You rose to reign, God. And we are grateful, Lord Jesus. So we bless your name. We thank you again for another day. We pray for Sister Patty, Lord God, and we expect a miracle, Lord God. We love you. We love you. We love you. In the name of Jesus, no sweeter name I know. Amen. The pastor call. Amen. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Yolanda, for showing us through a prayer of agreement what it looks like to um, stand on God's word, knowing that uh, we're gathered in his name. If we agree on these things, they will be done by our Father in heaven. And ushering us boldly uh, before into this song of verse in our time of need. Thank you, JC, for hosting. Um, and just thank everyone who um, opened up their voice or released the sound, um, or even if you didn't release the sound, just your presence um, today. Thank you for coming. Thank you to um, the Radical Midwife, Dion, for another opportunity to um, speak what the word would like me to speak as he merely uses me as a vessel on this day, April 1st. 2024, coming off the heels of Resurrection Sunday, um, as we agreed with Jesus' sacrifice, knowing that because of the shed blood, our sins have been forgiven. Um, we've been bought with the price, and we are redeemed. Um, so we thank you for, thank you, Lord, for the redemption power of your blood. And so as I begin to speak today on... <clears throat> The um, power of agreement, I want to start us off really quickly with um, a word of prayer. So, Abba Father, as I, as I speak what you have me to speak and I say what you would have me to say, I said I would um, decrease even the more so that you may increase, that you would give me the grace and the capacity um, to uh, pour out before your sheep words that are encouraging, that are uplifting, and that are in alignment with your will and your purpose for this day and for your kingdom. Um, I ask forgiveness of all sins, not or unknown, for this prayer be not hindered. And I accept that the kingdom of God is glorified. Your word is edified and the devil is absolutely terrified. And it's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Amen. So, um, I wanted to really quickly um, go over a few definitions and finding that the scripture the Lord led me to was the same one that was uh, spoken today, which was Matthew 18, 19. And so um, power and agreement. Those were um, the two definitions I wanted to start us off with. So what is the definition of power? Power is the ability to do something or act in a particular way, especially as a faculty or quality. Um, synonyms are capacity, potential, capability. And then we also have a second definition of power, which is the capacity or ability to direct or influence the behavior of others or the course of events. <clears throat> Another one is political or social authority or control, especially that's exercised by a government. And then we have agreement. We have agreement. Um, harmony or accordance in opinion or feeling a position or result of agreeing. Another definition is a negotiated and typically legally binding arrangement between parties as to a course of action. Um, the absence of incom incompatibility between two things. So when you think about the power of agreement and like I said, I'm going to talk about two different things. Um, we understand that one of the things that we agree with uh, as we become a believer is the agreement that we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord. We agree with Jesus' sacrifice. Um, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 says, surely he was born our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. 
but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. So if we understand that agreement from one of the definitions is a negotiated and typically legally binding arrangement between parties as to a course of action, we understand that if we agree with what the scripture says, um, Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. He was wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. So that lets us know that we are healed physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. We are healed because of Jesus' sacrifice. And the weight of what Jesus did on the cross um, will speak before God and cause things to come into divine order. Um, agreement and the power of agreement, especially when you agree with the word of God and you agree with what God says, um, allows an atmosphere of breakthrough and blessing. So when you understand that is one of the <clears throat> foundations of the power of agreement, of agreeing first and foremost with Jesus and his sacrifice for you, um, it opens up a realm for you in the in the spiritual realm where your testimony before God connected to his Jesus' work on the cross for you for you um, allows for there to be um, verdicts and decisions rendered on your behalf that are not necessarily based upon your works, that are not necessarily based upon your your actions, but they're based upon the actions of Jesus. So that's my <laughs> coming off the heels of Resurrection Sunday. I just had to put that in there um, since we're talking about the importance of the power of agreement. Um, and now I'm just going to go, as, as Tanya would say, down the street and around the corner. So I, growing up um, in sixth grade, I decided to uh, join and play in the orchestra. I personally absolutely love uh, symphony music. I love the orchestra. I love the sound that comes from um, different types of instruments, the strings, the violin, the viola, the cello, the bass, the woodwind instrument, um, which are things like the clarinet, the flute, the saxophone, you've got percussion instruments, you've got tons of musicians, anywhere from 30 to 100 different musicians, all coming together um, and releasing a sound that is in harmony um, and can really move a crowd it can it, it's so loud when they are doing it all on one accord but but the, the thing is because i played the violin um one of the things i found absolutely phenomenal about the symphony and the orchestra and um how it all comes together was that you can have instruments that individually sound completely different when you read the music, they're on different types of, of 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 musical, I guess you would call that clefs or scores. You've got the treble clef, um, for example. And they all can have different ranges and can only some can only go so high, some can only go so low. But when they all come together, the sound is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And it is the conductor who is the one who um, keeps them on tempo, on pace, keeps them all in agreement with one another. You know, like, why are you talking about classical music <laughs> right now? Um, well, let's go to scripture and I'll try to tie it two together. So, like we talked about, Matthew 18, 19. And this is Jesus talking, and he says, again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Read that one more time. 
because why? The word shares the interest of his word, brings light and understanding to the simple. So again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. And so if we go and we look at the word agree in this particular passage, um, it is the Greek word Phonio, which is where the word symphony is derived from, which means to be harmonious, to accord, be suitable, concur, or stipulate by compact, agree together. So when we understand that the word used here for the term agree is the word that we in the English definition have derived as symphony, we see the natural mimicking the spiritual. And let me put y'all on speaker because my okay. okay. So <clears throat> that being said, the orchestra, which is why I talked about my love for orchestra music, it mirrors it mimics and mirrors what Jesus was saying to his disciples in Matthew eighteen nineteen. When a symphony orchestra which combines many diverse instruments under the direction of the skilled conductor comes together, agrees together, they produce a beautiful musical masterpiece and its impact extends far beyond which any one instrument could achieve on its own. Hold on, y'all. I'm so sorry. I apologize, y'all. I just had an interruption. Okay. <clears throat> so when we compare what Jesus is saying, we look at in the natural realm, the example of symphony or agreeing together in the term of symphonio, which is the Greek term for agree that was used in that scripture, we see what the Christian community is as God intended it to be. We see what happens when you have the power of agreement and that means that if each individual operates in the way that God created you to, we all have a different sound. We all have a different range in terms of what we can do. But if you see a clarinet is not trying to be a violin, a drum is not trying to be a flute or a bassoon, a cello is not, is not trying to be a saxophone, each person, if you do exactly what God created you to do, but you continue as a unit to be under the direction of Jesus through the Holy Spirit as our guide, if we come together and we fulfill what God intended us to be in terms of a kingdom citizen or a kingdom community here on the earth, our impact will extend far beyond what one of us could do by ourselves. So what that means is there is power in agreeing with one another when we pray. There is power in agreeing with the purpose and plans for the body of Christ at large. And even though as we are all different, we are all individuals, we are all um, unique in our own right. When we yield to the direction of God and we allow for him to let us all come together, as we decree that our moves and our plans and our purposes, both individually and collectively, are synchronized and syncopated, with God's plans and purpose, when we come together in prayer, we will have a far greater power 
and a much more phenomenal impact that will extend beyond what one of us could achieve on our own. Because if two of us agree on earth about anything, we come together in unity, anything we ask, it will be done for us, our Father in heaven. That can sound, sometimes that can sound like um, hard to comprehend anything, anything, right? And that, and so I want to say anything that is under the, that is in alignment with God's plan and his purpose. But when you realize God's plans and purposes are far greater than our own comprehension, we at times can limit what we ask in unity for our own lack of understanding of what God can do. So I want you all to understand that in order to really hone in on the power of agreement, um, you have to make sure that you are in disagreement with any lies that the enemy may have may have caused you to believe are true that are contrary to the word of God. Google is an absolutely great tool for finding, especially if you're not completely versed in scripture, with finding scripture that aligns with what it is that you want to come in agreement with with someone else. So, for example, you want to, you, you have a loved one that, that's sick. You have a loved one that's sick, and you're like, well, I know the doctors are saying one thing, um, but I know God to be a healer. Um, I know God to be a deliverer. But I wonder what scripture says about healing or even God's will to want to heal you. Well, Exodus 15, 26 will tell you, I am the Lord who heals you. Uh, we talked about what Isaiah 53, 4, and 5 says, by his stripes we are healed. Um, you have Mark 11, 22 to 23, where Jesus tells them, have faith in God, and assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. You're like, okay, well, power of agreement means to be on one accord, it means to be in unity. It means to be in harmony, which means you can't have doubt when you're coming together in agreement because doubt is like an instrument playing in the wrong key when everyone else is playing on the, in, the same, in the same chord. It sounds off. So that's what doubt is. When you doubt, you're not truly saying, I believe that what God says he will do, he will do. There's a part of you that is off and is not in alignment with God's, with God's word. And that's why James um, warns us not to be double-minded because he said a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Because he says, one who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. And the doubter being double-minded and unstable in every way must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. So if you're going to understand that you, if you're going to hone into that power of alignment or power of agreement, rather, you have to make sure you don't have any doubt. Because if agreement is a legally binding arrangement between two parties as a course of action, doubt will cause you not to not to agree in that binding arrangement of what God's word says he has for you. Or 
sign on the contract. Like, mm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna do it, but doubt doubt will make you not you just your signature not show up on that contract. And, and that contract being God's clear that God's decree and declare for your life and what He has according to Scripture that's already been stored up for you in the courts of heaven or in the realm of the spirit. So that's the, if I could if I could hone in on anything right now. When you understand the power of agreement. And the prayer of agreement, when you have two or more that come together, you have to make sure there's no doubt between either one of you when you come together and agree. Can't have any doubt. So that's number one. Number two, uh, consistency. One of the definitions of agreement is consistency. So consistency means you stay on the same track, or let's go to the definition of consistency. You conform in the application of something, typically that which is necessary for the sake of accuracy. The achievement of a level of performance that does not vary greatly in quality over time. So if agreement, which also means symphony or harmony, which also means consistency, it means that what you're saying, what you're believing, how you're living does not vary greatly in quality over time. Because God's word does not, it, God's word is consistent. There's no inconsist, inconsistency in the word of God. It is what it is. So if you're going to agree with that, you're going to align yourself with what his word says. You have to make sure your outward life is reflective of the inner. So if inside you're inconsistent with your prayers of agreement with his word, you're inconsistent with you even fellowshipping with one another. You're inconsistent with fellowshipping with God. You're you're inconsistent with all of these things. Um, you're not allowing the the complete power that can come with the power of agreement. You're not allowing that power to be manifest in your life because of your own inconsistency. So if you got doubt and you've got inconsistency, those two things will hinder your ability to tap into the power of agreement. So as we go through this foundation, as we start off this month of the power of agreement, I want you all to reflect in your heart on, even if, even if you're coming together in agreement or you're asking for someone to pray in agreement with you, I want you to ensure that you are not asking these things because you doubt that God can do it if you ask alone. Because then that means you question God's ability in your life. But instead, you're asking because you understand that if two of us agree on anything, he'll do whatever. He will do whatever we ask. He will do whatever we ask. But are you but but do you believe that God would do it for you just because his word says he would? Make sure you don't have doubt according to, uh, you don't have doubt about what God's word is and what his word says and that you truly believe his word is true. And number 2, in order to tap into the power of agreement concerning the word of God and it being released in your life, you must make sure that you are consistent in your external life as you are in your internal. And if your internal is inconsistent, then you need to do the necessary small steps to ensure that the level of performance of your life that is reflective of the kingdom mandate or assignment God has for you does not vary greatly in quality over time. So when that all comes together, when you realize and you walk into everything um, that 
is in alignment with God's word, with God's plan, with God's purpose for your life. And you tap into the power of agreement through praying with one another. What happens is, as I close, you also then unleash the power of alignment. Because in that agreement with one another, in that agreement with God's word, in that agreement with God's plan and his purpose and his precepts, and you align yourself with it by removing doubt and inconsistency in your life, you then will operate in a way that will produce a new level of authority and power that you could never operate in by yourself. Through your connection with other people, through your connection in the realm of the spirit, um, in your connection with the Lord, and the breakthrough others receive is not just dependent on who you are. The breakthrough would also be because of who you are around and who you are joined and connected to. That is why tying it all back to symphony and the word symphonio. The sound that is released from one instrument is nowhere near as great and as loud as the sound that is released from the entire unit of the orchestra. So as I close, as I was making this quick and short, because um, just listen to the Holy Spirit, don't me not to do so much talking. Um, I really want you all to think, what connections do you have? And are those connections that you have with others in alignment with God's purpose and his plan for your life? That's number one. Number two, do you live in such a way that honors the word of God and that honors the divine relationships around you? so that you are given the access to the realm of empowerment for yourself and others. Do I have any doubt? Because doubt will hinder the flow of the anointing and the authority that can be given a legal right to function through me once I'm in agreement with the word of God. And then the last thing I'll say, I'll just hear it. What are things that I need to disagree with that I have either allowed myself to believe or have even spoken over myself that are in that are directly contrary to God's plan, God's will, God's purpose, and God's promises for my life. Because the same way there is power of agreement with what the word of God says, there is a power of agreement if you believe the lie and the power that you allow that lie to have over your life. So if the word says life and death is in the power of the tongue. Are you speaking that which is given death over your circumstances? Are you speaking that which is given life? Because what you are agreeing to, is it what the word says? Is it what God says? Or is it what the enemy says? Is it what, is it what doubt says? Is it what, is it what fear says? Is it what, is it what inconsistency says? So that's all I have. <laughs> that's all I have to share. First and foremost, agree with the sacrifices Jesus made for you because they unlock for you a verdict that would be rendered by the courts of heaven that allows breakthrough that you need and desire 
because it's the blood that speaks on your behalf. It's, his, it's the sacrifice of Jesus that speaks on your behalf. Agree first and foremost with that. And then from there, understand the power of agreement that comes from being in harmony with other believers in the body of Christ. All right. So. Large and not later. With- oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that's my time. I'll go ahead and close this out. So, um, Abba Father, I just want to thank you for the word that went forth. I ask that um, you allow revelation and understanding so that we under so that we are given a new interpretation of connection of alignment that is in accordance with what you decree in the courts of heaven. That we are given a new understanding of your power and that we surrender ourselves in submission to you. I ask that you allow us through the power of agreement and the power of alignment um, to be able to have connections and authority through the relationships um, and through first and foremost the relationship we have with you that allows you to function in a way in our lives that we would not be able to do without you. Let every single door that is supposed to be open through the power of agreement be open and every door that should be shut, let it be shut according to the power of agreement and alignment. Um, And as we go before you, as we discuss and we dive deeper in your word, Holy Spirit, I ask that you continue to unlock within us the new realms and the new understanding of our purpose individually and collectively as a body of Christ. And if there is anything that is not in alignment or in agreement with what you say concerning our lives, I ask that you would allow it to be exposed so that we can disagree with it now and let everything that is in disagreement with what you have for our lives, I ask that it would be it would be destroyed and dismantled in the course of heaven, and it would be covered by the blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Okay, I heard someone speaking. If you want to go ahead and speak now, you can. I think, well, hold on first. I'm sorry, it's been a while. (laughs) First and foremost, I want to open up the floor to anybody who is new to the call, who has not spoken. Um, Even if you've been on the call and you... Either if you've been on the call and you haven't spoken or if it's your first time and you and you would like to say good morning. I want to open up the floor to you and then I'll open up the floor to men and then anybody else that didn't get a chance to say good morning, say good morning earlier. So any new callers, any first time callers that haven't said good morning before, now's your time. Okay, there's not any first time callers, any new callers. Is there um any men that want to say good morning? All right. Anybody else want to say good morning before we move on to Love Life and Victory? Now's your chance. Good morning, it's Denise. Good morning, Denise. I do. Good morning, Joy Joy. Grace Share. Thank you, Cheryl. Good morning. Good morning, Cheryl. Hey, Yvette. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Leon. Your great decoration. Hey, Mama. Good morning. Enjoyed talking with you yesterday. Yeah, you too. <laughs> good morning, Miss Good morning. Leon. Happy Monday. This is dedicated. Thank you for your declaration. They're dedicated. I think I heard joyful. Wait. I'm not sure. Um, someone else is trying to speak. Who was that? You heard Tosh. Good morning. Hey Tosh. Thank you so much, sis. I love the symphonic analogy. Appreciate you. Thank you. 
Good morning, Ms. Kindness. Thank you for your declaration. You're welcome. Thank you. For calling in. Um, Good morning. This is Dr. Smart Gaither. Christina, excellent, beautiful analogies. Thank you so much for bringing it home to us in a way in which we could understand it. <clears throat> Excuse me for my voice this morning, but um, the prayer time earlier was very inspirational. Also, as you ushered us, um, as the um, prayer moderator ushered us into this session, and uh, your word, the uh, analogy with the symphony, and just following up with uh, being in union and in agreement. Thank you so much. This is a wonderful way to start off uh, this second quarter of the year as we push forth into the month of April. God bless you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mama, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all that delicious food yesterday. Um, all right. Well, then, if that's the case, we'll go into Love, Life, and Victory. If anybody has anything that stood out, resonated with them, that they'd like to share or talk more about, now Hey, time. Christina. It's Dee Dee. Can you hear me? I was trying to say yeah, hi to you, too. I didn't get off of mute fast okay. enough. So thank you for setting off this April 1st. Wow. It took me back to one of my spiritual warfare classes, The Power of Agreement. But it also reminded me of prayer and how um, when we ask someone to pray for us, a prayer request, we're simply asking for them to agree with us in prayer. So it just made me think about the the scripture that you use, that we have to pray the word, right, so that it'll activate God's word. And, and it, that brings back by unity. So there's so much power in it. And it, it's just so good that we're starting off. Um, with this topic for the month of April. Somebody talk. Can you mute your line, please? <laughs> but it's just like praying God's word. And when we, we do that, uh, just there's so much to this belief and this activating of faith and the power of agreement. So like you said, we come together and with one another. It's a unity thing. But we have to understand what that means. So thank you for just starting off the first um, day with it. Thank you, baby girl. Sound good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I um, I'm just thankful because, <laughs> like I said, this is all Holy Spirit. I was like, okay, all right, Lord, how do you want me to talk about it? And symphony just came came up, symphony. So I um. Hello. Oh, sorry. Hey, Marcy. No, go ahead. Hey, hey Marcy. Oh, yeah, I Great. just wanted to jump in. Since you did so amazing. I, you know, I love how you just bring, you, you brought it with such clarity. But the most thing that I love that you brought for us to understand is that doubt. That just keep on ringing, you know, to make sure we dismantle that doubt even when they try to sneak up. Because, you know, we I can say that I have felt that. You know what I'm saying? So I just love how you made sure the step how you gave it to us, the consistency, you know, everything. You just did so good. So I wanted to just say thank you, Joy. Love you. Thank you. Love you, too. <laughs> good morning, you. Christina Joy. It's pretty. Hey, pretty. Good morning. Beautiful analogy this morning. I thank God for you and your wisdom on this morning, your knowledge on this morning. I thank God for my part in the orchestra this morning. Hallelujah. And the power of agreement. Um I I didn't I didn't, you know, put in a prayer request, but I want everyone to call out Dominique when you pray. And I ask that um we agree that he is healed that he is saved, that he is sanctified and filled with the precious Holy Ghost. It is already done. I'm just waiting on the manifestation of it. So thank you for your declaration on this morning. Love you, sis. You're welcome. Thank you. Love you, too. And um, I just keep... um, I keep seeing things. I'll probably I'll probably talk to you about it offline. Um Okay. About Dominique. We'll talk about it after the call. But it's okay. good stuff. 
<laughs> but then, yeah, it was good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a scripture I didn't mention that I wanted to just um, really quickly let everybody know if you have a moment today in your, you know, in your quiet time or if you just have a moment where you just want to go read a scripture to look up Ephesians 4, 4 through 7. Um, again, that's Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. And I was going to read it to you all in the Passion Translation. And it says, being one body and one spirit, as you were all called into the same glorious hope of divine destiny, for the Lord God is one, and so we are. For we share in one faith, one baptism, and one Father. And he is the perfect Father who leads us all, works through us all, and lives in us all. Uh, for he has generously given each one of us supernatural grace according to the size of the gift of Christ. So that is um, just tied to the symphony piece of it. We're one body. We are one collective unit under one God. But he's given us all a measure of a different measure of grace according to the gift of Christ. He's given us grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So we all have different talents, different abilities, different personalities, different looks, but we're still all one body. So um, Paul was just letting letting the church of Ephesus know the importance of being in one accord while also being appreciative of your own individual uniqueness. So that's all I wanted to include, just to remind you all, like, be you. Don't try to be someone else. Don't try to sound like someone else. Sound like who you are. Be who you are. But understand that your uniqueness, once in harmony with everyone else, it's, um, it will do what God intended it to do for uh, the body of Christ, what we are supposed to do here on the earth. So just be mindful of that. Just continue to be your unique self. Can't stress that enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody else? Hi, good morning. This is Lenore. Uh, thank you for your share, for your study, and for making it so palatable and digestible. Uh, I, too, used to play the violin uh, so I could really relate to what you shared. Um, something else that stood out to me was um, some of the questions that you've encouraged us to ask ourselves um, to look at our connections and to see, you know, are we living in a way um, that is honorable? Um, and another thing that stood out was sometimes we too loosely say, yes, I'm praying with you or I'm praying in an in agreement with you. But I think that this really um, enlightened the commitment that we're making when we say that and not to take it lightly. Um, but yeah, we, we are standing in agreement with people and people are depending on our, on our prayers. Um, when we play an instrument by ourselves, a solo, a solo sounds different than, um, than the group as a whole. So I thank you for, for opening that up. Uh, to us today. You're welcome. Thank you, Lenore, for coming. Thank you for um, your addition to that. And and you know you brought up something. And here's a, and here's something I want I wonder I want you to think about because what would the orchestra sound like if you had people saying that they're playing, but they're not emitting any sound. Like, you see the instruments, the string instruments, you see them moving their bow, but the bow's not touching the string. Or you see a saxophone player moving his hands, 
but he's not blowing in it, so it's not releasing the sound. It wouldn't sound nowhere near as impactful um, as it should have if everybody was doing their part. So when you say, if someone sends you a text or someone's like, can you pray for me? Or can you pray in agreement? You say, yeah, I will. But then you don't ever go around and pray. You may forget. You might get distracted. Um, or you might just not want to pray in that moment, but you say to the person, yeah, I'll pray with you. What does your lack of sound do to the overall impact for the kingdom? Just something to think about. Yes. Um, yeah. Anybody else want to share anything? All right. Well, if nobody else has anything Christina that they would like. Christina. Yes. Hey, Christina. Good morning. Hey, Linda. Good morning. Mm-hmm. So I just want to thank you for uh, your commitment, your agreement to live uh, your life in accordance to God's will. And um, first and foremost, um, I, I, I really... Uh, appreciate your walk and your commitment as far as I can see, right? Um, mm-hmm. And what that means is is that our walk and our commitment with God, at least for me, is a is really a personal thing, right? And we can uh, live uh, out loud, so to speak. We can um, see what we can do what God <clears throat> tells us to do, excuse me, <clears throat> but our personal walk for me mm-hmm. um, is the most important because God knows every hair on my head. God knows what my thoughts and my desires are. God knows what my temptations are. <clears throat> and I hope I'm making sense, right? Um mm-hmm. <clears throat> So then, I really like what uh, Patrice said, that she was just happy to be in the orchestra. And I like your analogy when you uh, likened us to like a symphony and how every uh, instrument has its place, right? Um, But not only the instruments have their place to do, to play, to harmonize at the same time, uh, but the audience listening to the sympathy, symphony, they have their place, right, to appreciate the music. And I was thinking about also how when we praise God, when we praise God, we're praising him because we're in agreement uh, with his will and his way for our lives. We praise him because we recognize um, that he is our strong power. He's our stalwart, Right. He is everything that we need, right? And um, so I just really want to acknowledge you as a woman of God. Every time you speak, um, I I learn something or I get to view or perceive something in a different way that I had not before. Um, I'm able to open my mind and stretch and bend and become more flexible so that I can better seek his face so that I can more wholly seek his face so I can course correct, so I can, you know, uh, adjust myself um, so that, you know, I'm in agreement with, with his word, right? So that's all I want to say. Just thank you. Everybody have a blessed day. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but... <laughs> I, I, you know, getting getting here has been um, has been a process, and I just appreciate God 
constantly tuning me up, so to speak, um, with my symphony analogy, because, yeah, I um, <laughs> I can only, you know, I can only stand before y'all and talk about this stuff because I have made the commitment to stay consistent. Um, but that took, that took me making that decision. Um, and as you were talking, I thought about something because you talked about our own individual lifestyle and our own walk. Um, and sometimes we have to course correct, right? And I'm, I'm going to tie it into Stephanie. When, for people who've been in an orchestra or um, the audience, if you come early, you might hear them warming up and they're all playing different melodies. They're all playing different, different things. It sounds like a, it sounds like a bunch of noise really it sounds like a bunch of noise but then when the conductor walks in it gets quiet you might hear the audience clapping and then he raises up his um i want to say a baton i'm gonna i forget the, the name of the of the stick but he raises it, it up a- and they uh it is a baton okay thank you uh <laughs> And they all kind of do their do a sound together in unity, almost like they're doing a scale, and the harmony sets in. Um, when they're doing the song, they're all reading off the same sheet music, even though it's in different chords, it's in different it's in different um, types of like a treble clef, whatever whatever it is, they're all reading off the same the same sheet, and. If anybody is not playing in alignment with whatever's on that sheet, they're messing up the overall sound. So if your individual life is not reflective of what God's will is and let the sheet be his word, your sound will be off when it's collectively played with the rest of the body. And so that's that course correct. That's always making sure we think in alignment with what he says, and then sometimes allowing him to tune us up because you can be in, you can be playing, you can be say, playing the right music, but your sound is off because your strings need tuning. Something needs tuning individually. So, you know, that's the individual piece of making sure you're correct and making sure you're consistent that also taps into that power of agreement with others. So, hadn't wanted to put that in. And what? Watching the conductor, staying with his pace, right? Making sure we follow what the Lord tells us to do, making sure we all stay on one accord, all of these things. Um, so, yeah. All right. Anybody else got anything they want to add? If not, we'll go ahead and close it out. Okay, well, reminder, um, we do have um, Marriage Matters tonight, 6.30. Um, 6.30, so Pacific Standard Time. So make sure you come for if you're married or you're married hopeful and understand our glean from the wisdom of those that have been in alignment and agreement with one another as a husband and wife and how they stay connected um, and stay in alignment with God's will for their lives and for their marriage. So that would be great for anybody who wants to come to that. Even if you come and you're married or you're a husband or a wife and you come without your spouse, just coming to, to here would be amazing. All right. So that being said, join us again tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for day two of the Power of Agreement. And I'll go ahead and pray and close us out. So, um, Abba Father, I just want to thank you again for your grace. Thank you for your loving kindness and the multitude of your tender mercies. Um, I ask that you allow our prayers that are in agreement with one another that they reflect your heart, um, that they cause the anointing of your presence to saturate us and to be manifest in our lives. I thank you that 
you release your blessing upon each and every one of us. Pray the blessing of the Lord make us one rich and add us no sorrow. Um, we thank you for the power that exists when believers get together in agreement. As we release one sound, as we um, pray the will of the Father in our lives, and as we believe that we're two or more gathered in your name, not only are you in the midst, but that whatever we agree upon, it will be done by you in heaven. We ask that not just for declare victory as a, as a collective body, but just for the body of Christ at large, that you give us the instruction on how to operate like a symphony orchestra in harmony with one another. Um, I ask that you allow our sounds to blend together, allow our lifestyles to blend together, allow our personalities and our characteristics and our uniqueness, allow it to all come together in a way that gives you glory, that gives you the honor, that gives you the praise. And if there is any part of us individually or collectively that is driving us apart, and it's encounter culture to you, the way that you want us to be in unity with one another. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would bring it to remembrance to us, that you would bring it to the forefront um, so that we can address those things, so that we can squash those things, and we can focus on the things that bring us together as the body of Christ. I pray for every leader on this call, for we are all called to be leaders and ministers of reconciliation here upon the earth. I ask that you allow our lifestyles to reflect the life of Christ. I thank you for allowing us to be supportive of one another as we step out on faith and do the things that you've called us to do. And again, we thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. Um, we thank you for you over overcoming death, hell, and the grave, for you allowing the veil to be torn that separated us from the Father. Thank you for all that you've done for us what you're still doing for us now as we surrender your your plan we surrender our will to your plan and your purpose for this day and for the remainder of our lives as we agree upon what you say as we agree upon what you want us to do and we step out on faith and we do it if there's any areas of our lives over the next 30 days that is inconsistent god i ask that you allow us to make the necessary changes to live a life that is consistent as you are a consistent God. Uh, and let us continue to just be love and light here on the earth. Cover each and every person with your armor that you tailor made for them. And I thank you for allowing for them to have an opportunity to be a light to someone in the midst of their own darkness. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless Amen. everybody. Amen. Okay. Amen. Everybody have a, have a wonderful day. I love Amen. you. Amen. Have a beautiful, blessed Amen. day. Amazing day. Have a great day, everybody. Love you guys.